Good morning, everyone. Welcome. My name is Cindy DeMint. It is my pleasure to serve on the board of directors for the National Taxi Foundation. I'm also a support group leader in Orange County, California, and I got involved with NAF because three out of my four children have ataxia. Um, I started raising funds right away, uh, having a walk and roll in our, in our area. Uh, we would have had our 13th walk and roll this year. I'm glad we're able to do this virtually. I'm excited to have my friends and my family get involved. And uh, we, I just wanna encourage you guys to send out some emails, get some people excited about uh, sponsoring NAF, helping us find a cure for ataxia. Our website will be open for the next couple months. You'll be able to uh, still get those people to send money in if they are interested. And most of all, I just want you to have a lot of fun today. We've got some really great things planned and thank you so much again. Let's find a cure for ataxia. To those of you on the East Coast or here in the Midwest, good afternoon. To those of you in the mountain time zone or out on the Pacific Coast, good morning. I'm Joel Sutherland, Director of Development here at the National Taxi Foundation, welcoming you to the second annual virtual walk and roll. And uh, speaking of our friends out on the West Coast, I'd like to say thank you to Cindy DeMint uh, for her welcome here this morning and uh, really to thank her and her husband, Jerry, and her entire family for all they do for us here at the National Taxi Foundation. Thank you so much, Cindy. Um, and welcome to my co-host from the East Coast. Um, those of you who have been with us for a couple of years, uh, you know that Dana and I kind of tag team. Please, uh, Dana, say hi. Dana is our uh, the national host to the uh, forever popular Did You Know podcast, and and Dana and I connect on these uh, every so often. Dana, how are you this morning or this I'm afternoon? Great. I'm great, Joel. Thank you. How are you doing? And we're ready to go. We've got a beautiful day here I'm in Twin Cities. Go. Oh yeah, this this should be fun. We had a great time with it last year. I'm sure we will this year as well. And. Uh, Hey, you know, one thing I want everybody to know that uh, if you want to make a donation today during today's program, you can just uh, click, up, click on the uh, link above and, um, and we'll be able to uh, accommodate your donation. So thank you in advance for that. Uh, Dana, are you, are you ready to, uh, to get going on this thing today? I am so ready to get going on this All thing. right. Well, let's, let's start out by, uh, well, first, we're going we're gonna to have an announcement on our first prize giveaway. Dana, why don't you take that away? Oh, I, this is this is what I love. This is exciting. So our first uh, Visa gift card is for two hundred dollars, and the recipient of that is going to be Karen Russell. So congratulations, Karen, on winning that gift card. See, I mean, the fun is starting like right away. I, what is, I mean, what, what are we two minutes into this, and uh, we already have our first winner, which which is which is outstanding. And uh, well, what we want to do is is uh, let everybody know what's going to happen uh, today. And uh, so, Dana, why don't, why don't you start it out? Let uh, begin with. We'll tell the folks what we can, what they can expect, and we'll have a. Uh, uh, we'll we'll do our first code here in just a little bit. So, uh, Dana, take it away. All right, great. Thank you, Joel. So, you know, part of what we want to, you know, highlight today are, you know, we want to acknowledge those who have done a, you know, a, a live in-person walk and roll this year. We want to, you know, give you a big shout out and a huge thank you to you. And we also want to acknowledge and respect those of you who opted out this year. Right. You know, it's still a crazy, it's, we're living in crazy times still. And so we're really hoping to be in a different position next year that will encourage more walk and rolls to go live. So there we're going to talk about walk and rolls today. We're also going to talk about passion fundraising. Um, you know, there's uh, a lot of people have some great ideas uh, that they want to do to get involved with now. And uh, some people just need to need a, that little nudge, that little, that little push, that idea, that conversation to get things going. So we're going to, we're going to spend time talking about passion fundraising. Yeah, and we're also going to acknowledge some really great folks who have done and continue to do really amazing things for the Ataxia family. So we want to acknowledge them in the broadcast today. Now, I know a lot of people, uh, when, they, when they get on uh, line with us, there's a lot of talk about science and research. Um, we're not going to have any of that today. No science, no research. We're just hoping that we're going to have 90 minutes of uh, maybe some fun. Uh, hopefully, at the end of this 90 minutes or so, uh, you'll say, hey, that was nice. That was really good. Really enjoyed it. And if we did that, uh, we'll have done our job today. 
Yeah, we're also going to have prize giveaways. So we already gave away one Visa gift card, but we have a total of five, which, you know, we're going to be giving away throughout today. So we're excited to do that as well. And I mentioned earlier, we're going to be doing a code. We're going to be doing codes during the day. So you're going to have to pay attention and stay with us through the whole, through the whole program. Now, it's, we're going to have six codes for you. I'm going to give you the first one here right now. The first code for today is money. Um, that's our first code. And we'll let you know when they're coming up. So stay tuned. And be sure to write each one of them down. At the end of today's program, I want you to send your submissions to me at Joel at ataxi.org, okay? And then uh, about three o'clock today, from all the submissions I get, we're gonna do a drawing and that winner is gonna win a $300 gift card. So uh, keep an, an eye and an ear out for the codes that will be coming your way. Uh, you could win $300 gift card. Yeah, that sounds great. So again, the first code is money, M-O-N-E-Y. We also have a new feature this year, a chat feature. And we're going to be soliciting ideas from you throughout our 90 minutes today. And so, you know, when we do that, we're going to ask you to write it, write, write your ideas in the chat. So we are looking forward to using that new feature today. All right. Now, some of you have heard this in the past. Some of you have it. Maybe it's refresher. Maybe it's something fresh. Um, today, I'm dressed as the human logo. Um, and what I mean by that is when you look at the, the logo for the National Taxi Foundation, we have, a, we have a very unique color scheme, um, but what does it stand for? Some of you may uh, remember our dark blue, it stands for strength, blue ribbon, first place. Our light blue reflects compassion, compassion throughout our entire community. And the gold, the gold tie, this represents hope. And for those who've been with us in the past, you know that there are often times that we will auction off this gold tie for hope. And we're doing the same thing today. So we're hoping that we will um, raise a couple of dollars today by auctioning off this gold tie, this tie that represents hope. And you can submit your entries uh, on your bid, your bid, I should say, by sending them to me at joel at ataxia.org. And I'm gonna be monitoring them throughout the day. Um, and I'll let you know where, where the, uh, the bids stand. And I'd like to have somebody uh, send me an email at joel at ataxia.org. That started out at $100. Um, how is that all right? Is that everybody ready to go? Yeah, Remember, Joel at ataxia.org. Um, something else you're going to uh, see today is um, our executive de director, Andrew Rosen, really took it to the streets and is going to be, uh, he has a number of videos for you today showing you where some of the dollars go that uh, uh, we receive from our donors each year. Some great videos that Andrew's done for us, and uh, we'll be showing those to you as well. Yeah. I think it's really going to be a great, um, you know, opportunity to see Andrew in his um, broadcasting role. Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So right now to like kick things off, we want to just talk a little bit about sponsorship and how very important it is. And we have a great community of people that have sponsored us over the last several years, and that's Biohaven Pharmaceuticals. So right now we are going to go to a video from Ann Newman. She's the rare disease marketing lead at Biohaven Pharmaceuticals. It, the sponsorship is so important and it's so appreciated. So let's now hear from Ann. Hi, walk and rollers. I'm Ann Newman. I work for Biohaven Pharmaceuticals. I am thrilled and honored to be able to welcome you to your virtual walk and roll. We at Biohaven continue to be just honored on how much the Ataxia community has welcomed us like family, and we really do consider you like family too. Uh, I've been working behind the scenes with NAF for a couple of years now, so when they asked me to welcome you with this video, uh, nervous but thrilled to be able to do that with you. We at Biohaven continue to be so de dedicated to the Ataxia community and all that you stand for. We look forward to a time in the future when we can get together and meet again. But until then, uh, know that Biohaven is thinking of you on this virtual walk and roll, and we are just thrilled to continue to sponsor you, as I've mentioned. So with no further ado, walk and rollers, start your engines because the virtual walk and roll is beginning. 
Thanks so much, Anne, um, you know, on behalf of Biohaven. It's really great to know that Biohaven considers NAF part of their family exactly. and that they're really excited about continuing the sponsorship for NAF. That's really exciting. It, it really is. I mean, um, uh, you know, they're working hard on, um, on finding those, the treatments uh, that we so are, are looking for so, so greatly right now. Um, but to have them join us uh, year in, year out, uh, and helping us put these programs together is, is so meaningful. And uh, so on behalf of all of us here at NAF and our entire uh, Taxi family, uh, thank you, Biohaven, for all you do for our community. Um, it's, been, it's been a really solid uh, walk and roll season for us this year, hasn't it? We've had some great things going on, Dana, from um, our tri-state walk and roll up there at uh, uh, Liberty State Park to a, a wonderful walk and roll this past weekend uh, in Salt Lake City. Yeah, we really have. We've had many states represented. So as you mentioned, New Jersey, we also had South Dakota this year, yep. Illinois, Minnesota, and Indiana. So, I mean, it was really terrific. And, you know, our folks in Pittsburgh had, had a great event as well. So uh, folks down in, in uh, on the Treasure Coast, a lot of people, you know, stepping up and putting together the walk and rolls. And, and like Dana said during uh, our opening, we really um, understand and respect uh, the decisions have, that have been made across the country this year to maybe stay um, stay remote and stay virtual with the walk and rolls. Um, we respect that. We celebrate uh, everybody's decision on on what what took place. It's been a good year, and I think we all feel the same way. We hope everybody's back um, and doing these live again next year, Dana. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. I think in every facet of our lives, we're hoping to be back to norm, yeah. somewhat of a normal next year. So true. But hey, let's take a couple of minutes and let's take a, a look at some of the, uh, the walk and roll action uh, across the country this past fall. Sounds good.
Joel, that was really a great representation of the walks that we had this year. You know, I'm going to reflect back for a minute, if you'll just indulge me. I'll call and back, back to you, Joel. Me. All right. So um, John and I had our first walk and roll. I, it has to be like at least 12 years ago. Uh -huh. And I just wanted to tell you a little bit about it. It was seven people, Joel. Seven. And it was only our immediate family. A quality, it was a quality group, right? It was a quality group. It was a freezing cold day. Um, we got the police department involved because we walked through the streets of our town and we wanted to make sure that we would be protected because we had bicycles. Right. And um, we were all, you know, complaining the whole entire time. <laughs> Why are we doing this? This is just crazy. Yeah. And, you know, we had a little bit of sponsorship, but it was essentially seven people. And do you know what? We took photographs the whole entire way. Oh, that's great. And we yeah. look back on it now and we're like, it's such a great memory. It's like, oh, remember when we did that? And it and it was wonderful because you could see it grow over time. So I'm sure that everybody who has held a walk and roll can totally relate to that. And they know the satisfaction that they get when they see it grow over time, even if it's just a little bit. So how uh, at your last walk and roll, how many people attended, you think? Or so the, the last yeah. walk and roll, it was probably like um, a couple hundred. So, Please. you know, it continues yeah. to keep expanding, which is really wonderful. But, you know, the memories are good, too, of the seven people that showed up and were dedicated <laughs> to the cause. Well, you know, we're going to talk about that a little bit later, but you're spot on. I mean, some of the stuff is truly about uh, making memories, right? Yeah, so. it really is. All right. Let's take uh, talking about making memories. Let's uh, let's take the next step. Um, in our uh, code program for today. The second code for today is buys. Okay, the second word is buys. Remember, uh, write these down and at the end of today's program, send, uh, send them to me at joel at a taxi .org. Uh, We'll be conducting a drawing about an hour and a half after today's program. And the winner in that drawing is gonna receive a $300 gift card. So, uh, Second code is buys. Dana? That's really great. And yeah. you know, it's time for us to give away our second Visa gift card. Awesome. Yeah, so I'm very excited to announce that Kelly Rutledge has won a $100 Visa gift card. So congratulations to you, Kelly, if you're watching. Hi, Kelly. Uh, I got a chance to meet Kelly at, uh, in Nashville this past year at, at one of our events. So I uh, met her and her husband, Luke. If I recall correctly, they had a wonderful time with uh, a luggage that didn't make it uh, that, that way and uh, uh, wound up uh, in, in a rainstorm for uh, for the event. And uh, pretty mem talking about making memories, um, <laughs> I, I'd like to think that both Luke and, and Kelly will look upon that memory fondly. So uh, congratulations to, to Kelly. Um, you know, as we mentioned in our opening, there's going to be a couple of times today where you get to hear from our executive director, Andrew Rosen. Uh, Andrew has uh, has been on the has been on the move here over the last couple of weeks, and uh, Andrew is going to share some thoughts with uh, with you about where uh, some of the money that's donated to NEAP goes. So uh, let's hear from Andrew, our executive director, Andrew Rosen. Hi, everyone. Andrew Rosen here, executive director of the National Taxi Foundation. As you can see, I'm at the airport, and it reminds me of one of the great uh, philanthropy programs that NAF offers, our travel grant program for our annual conference. This, this program has allowed hundreds of people over the years to attend our conference and gain a bit of financial support in order to do so. And we thank all of the donors that have contributed to that program over the years for making it possible. Just another reminder to perhaps find a passion of yours, do a fundraiser on behalf of NAF, and then that money can go to a program like our AAC Travel Grant Program that can help so many. So thank you for all your support. Take care. Thank you, Andrew. And it was really great to learn about the travel grants. I'm not sure how many people in our listening audience know about those. But, you know, Joel, I have another little story. I'm full of stories today. <laughs> um, but my story is that we, in our New England support group, we've had a couple of members oh, that have benefited from those travel grants. So I would just like everybody in the listening audience to know that they can really be a great addition to getting you to a conference 
Right. You know, it's, uh, if I recall correctly, um, one of our, our past presidents, Arnie Grutzmacher, uh, initiated this program uh, through a major donation uh, upon his passing. And it was very thoughtful, well thought out, and, and so valuable to, um, to our community. As we all know, sometimes, you know, getting to our conferences can be costly. And uh, the fact that we're able to provide some help um, uh, for those who want to make it to our, uh, to our conference is, is just wonderful. And, and uh, Andrew, um, nice, uh, nice job. Thanks for sharing that with us. Um, hey, it's been a great walk and roll season. Um, I'm not sure how many people are actually going to um, take the hike this afternoon as part of our virtual programming. Um, some will, some won't. Hopefully, uh, if you have nice weather, um, wherever you are today, maybe following our program, you just want to go out and take a, take a little hike around the neighborhood, perhaps, um, and understand that uh, uh, today we're kind of putting a bow on our, our walk and roll season today. And um, if it's nice out, uh, take a short walk and uh, kind of um, uh, help us put a bow on, on our walk and roll season. So uh, with that, uh, we're going to start moving into our, uh, the area of passion fundraising which is, has really been um, uh, a real growth area for us. And so what is passion fundraising? Um, you know, Dana, you, you guys found out what some of that was th this past year with uh, the golf tournament in Wittensville, didn't you? Yeah, no, we really did. It was an opportunity to say, hey, you know what? Uh, we really like to golf. We have an opportunity because, you know, John is managing this golf the food service for a golf course right. and it was like let's coordinate together and really make something happen and we had a great event there you actually came <laughs> and uh you know it was it was an opportunity to do something that we liked but also that could benefit a taxier and raise funds for a taxia so it was yeah, really it was, kind of a fun day yeah it was, it was really a lot of fun and uh, it kind of reminds me i uh uh, I left a gold tie there that day um, because uh, that that gold tie turned turned into a trophy that is going to be mounted there at the Wittensville uh, Golf Course with the uh, tournament winners' names uh, uh, alongside of it. Uh, by the way, I took off today's uh, tie that we're auctioning off because I didn't want the winner of the tie to to get a tie with coffee spilled on it. So I just I know how it can be. Um, I thought it'd be best that I, I, I just uh, put that aside. Yeah, I um, think it's best. With, with regard to our passion fundraising, you know, we simply ask people to uh, to think with your heart. Uh, what do you like to do? Uh, what do you want to do? What do your friends uh, like to do? And if you think with your heart, uh, chances are you're going to be going down the right path, right? And um, and we know that there's um, um, people are going to raise funds with these events, but there's other things that go along with them such as rate building awareness, raising awareness in your community on what a taxi is. We can never do enough of that. You energize your community, the stories that you make and the, and the publicity you get, um, they help energize the community in your areas. Um, we can't underestimate that. And then to dovetail on something that Dana said earlier, it's creating memories. Um, you know, it's funny uh, when we get done with an event, uh, there'll be times where people will be grumbling that this didn't go well or that didn't go well or all next year we're going to do it different and um, but boy the memories they make and they get back at it the next year it's really a lot of fun and and finally i, I really can't tell you how many times um i've heard from folks who do something to get involved with us even in the smallest way in, in a passion fundraising or a walk and roll is they really feel they have a purpose and are really being a part of this and i'll tell you that it's so true um even in the smallest way and uh, well the big thing is you have to start and um, I was a part of a, uh, a passion fundraising event that started, uh, I think it was 19, or 2018, with Laura Cobb, her friend Tammy Brazil, and their families. Uh, it took place in, um, in uh, Chicago. And well, let's hear from Laura. Laura's got a great story to tell us about uh, Cameron's call for a cure. Uh, let's hear from Laura. Hi, my name is Laura Cobb. My motivation for wanting to help the National Ataxia Foundation was a diagnosis our family received um, for our daughter, Cameron, in 2015. She was diagnosed with spinal cerebellar ataxia. Our family had never heard of it. Um, we don't have any family history of ataxia. And I instantly felt that I needed to 
do something to get the word out about this brain disease because we could quickly see how much and how fast it was affecting Cameron, who at the time was only 15. Today, she's 21. And um, how I got started fundraising was, you know, having an initial conversation with Joel Sutherland. Um, we decided that what worked well for us was a party, um, um, an event. Um, to celebrate Cameron, to rally behind her, to support her, um, to show her some love, to have our friends and family come out and get dressed up and you know, give her an opportunity to share her story with everyone, where she was at that point in time. The first one was in 2019 and we did it at a restaurant in a private room and the room was filled and we were elated um, and excited for her and for um, you know, the, the, all the love and the generosity of people coming out. We didn't know where to start. We didn't know how much people would spend on a ticket um, to attend this event. Um, it was pretty low key. We had a open bar and um, past hors d'oeuvres. So um, it wasn't even a meal, but people hands down had no problem paying a hundred dollars a ticket to support us. Um, it made Cameron feel good, you know, having um, one of her friends there, um, having her being surrounded by friends and family. Um, it was a great event and it, it inspired us to want to do it again and to continue to want to do it over and over again. So we had one the next year in 2019, right? Yeah, 2019 before COVID. Um, and that one was bigger and it was better. We had a bigger venue. We had a dance floor. We had, um, um, you know, more meals, more, more options for meal options. We had a silent auction. I had girlfriends who stepped up, who um, went out and found, found silent auction items for us. So um, our plan was for 2020 to do it even bigger, but then the pandemic hit and um, that's not going to stop us from wanting to do it again in 2022 when we can all safely gather again. Um, I think the biggest tip that I have is just don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid to rally your friends, your family, your neighbors, your social groups, um, your church members. Um, people are very generous and they don't know what to do to help you and they'll do whatever you ask. So I think the biggest thing is getting being, being, you know, putting the word out there, use your social media, reach out to your friend connections, you know, have your family share it with their friend connections, with their church connections, whatever, get the word out and you'll be surprised how quickly people will want to come out and support you and your event. Um, our friends and family like to get dressed up. So that works for us. Um, maybe a picnic or a walk or, um, Meeting at a um, you know a local bar is is would work better for you know your friends and network, and so whatever works for you, I think you just have to figure out where that comfort level is for you. Reach out to the foundation; they're very supportive. Like throwing a party or a gathering or a fundraiser, and they they do all the all, they're behind the scenes. They're the support behind the scenes, and you and your family can be the the face of. Um, whatever you know you want to call your event our event is called Cameron's call for a cure and it's something that like I said we're going to continue to do going forward and um, I'm available as a network as as a, as a um, as a resource you know as needed as well and you can get in touch with me through the foundation thank you hey thanks so much Laura I uh, appreciate you taking the time to tell that story uh, it was a great event um, Actually, I've been to two of Cameron's calls for a cure. And, um, you know, in Laura's um, message today, she referenced uh, sitting down and, and talking about getting this thing, uh, getting Cameron's call for a cure launched. And one of my memories uh, at the beginning of that, I was sitting down with uh, Laura and her friend Tammy, and we were at a restaurant uh, in suburban Chicago. And uh, we started, you know, we everything. We started getting into the details, and we were getting down into, uh, you know, how is this going to happen, and how is that going to happen, and and we were. It's not like we were stalling out or anything, but we were really kind of getting down into the trees, so to speak. And then.
And then almost uh, simultaneously, both uh, Tammy and Laura said, you know what, let's just start. And I, I won't forget that because um, it really exemplified, you know what, that's what we have to do. Just start. And the chances are, well, the fact is you're not going to have all the answers when you start. You can't. Um, you can give vision to them and you can anticipate things, but you aren't going to have all the uh, have all the answers. Um, and the main thing, uh, just like with Cameron's call for a cure, they started and um, it's been a lot of fun. Granted, COVID took a year away from us, but I know we're going to be getting back at it. And um, I'd like to thank them for, for all their work with that. And um, you know what? They just started and now it's taken off and, and they've created a lot of memories uh, as we were talking about and had a lot of fun doing it, Dana. Yeah, you know, um, in my experience, because I've done a couple of these as well, it's like you start and then it happens and then you adjust. You see what takes place where yeah. you can, you know, make things better, what you might be able to cut out. It, but you're right. You just have to do it. And then once you do it, you have that experience to draw from and then you know what to do next time or not to do next time. Yeah. Right? And, if, and if I could add, I, I just want to let people know that um, you don't have to get started on this alone. Um, we're here to help you. Um, if you have an idea, a thought, a question, um, you know, as Laura indicated, we will we'll help create the fundraising pages. We'll We'll help uh, create your text to donate codes. We'll help you with designs. Uh, we'll help you with budgeting if, if you need help with that. Um, don't think you're in this alone. Uh, we can start together on these things. You know, there'll be times where, you know, we might look at something and we want to make, give it a little different change to, to you know, just based on the experiences we've had. Um, but we're here to help you and, um, and we want to help you. So um, somewhere along the line, let's start, all right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And even Laura, she said, you know, that people could get in touch with her through the foundation. So yeah. if somebody watching today connected with Laura and wanted to like pick her brain, you know, you, she, she can be reached through the foundation. Yeah. So, you know, good ideas for that. And speaking of ideas, yeah. I'm just curious if we've like, you know, if Laura, listening to Laura has generated any ideas for anybody. You know, we spoke earlier about the fact that we have this new chat option. Right. So we would love it if you could put any ideas that you have in the chat. We would love to see some of the things that you guys come up with. And it doesn't have to be fully baked, like right. Joel said. Just get those ideas flowing and now's your chance to put those in the chat. Absolutely, I mean, there's, there really is, uh, there are no bad ideas. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, don't, don't think about it. Uh, don't be too hard on yourself. Just, you know, what do you like to do? What do your friends and family and your colleagues like to do? Um, I, I've got, a, I've got a sneaking suspicion that we could probably build something around that. So, um, so there you go. Thanks again, uh, Laura. And with that, let's, um, you know, it's time for our next Visa gift card giveaway, Dana. Who do we have? Oh, this is like, this is so exciting. It's going so fast too. <laughs> All right, so now, um, and I'm gonna apologize in advance because I'm hoping to say this name correctly. So our third Visa gift card winner is Peyton Golum Golumski. There we go. And it's a $100 Visa gift card. So Peyton, congratulations to you for winning that gift card. Way to go, Payne. And by the way, we have a $125 bid on the gold tie. So um, who's going to make the uh, bid this up a little bit more? We've got a bid at $125. And um, send your bid to me at joel at ataxia.org. And we'll keep an eye on that. And uh, let's see what we can do to uh, raise some funds and find a new home for this, uh, this tie of hope. Um, next up is our third code for our code our $300 gift card giveaway. Our third code is research. All right. Hopefully you've got the first two. The third one is research. And remember, write them all down. And then after today's program, uh, send them to me at joel at ataxia.org. And we will uh, we'll have a drawing at three o'clock central time today from those who submit uh, the code correctly and that person will win a $300 gift card. So um, how's that sound, Dana? That sounds great. I mean, yeah. I want to enter. <laughs> hey, that's, you're but, not eligible. But I won't. <laughs> that's right. Nope, that's all right. Well, hey, um, we have someone else uh, 
we want you to hear from, who's been a, uh, a vital member of our, our passion fundraising community. Um, I met uh, Mark a couple of years ago. Um, and uh, well, you know what? I'll let his video speak for himself. Um, yeah. Just another look, another thought uh, in, in getting involved with uh, NAF within the area of passion fundraising. Here's uh, Mark Minkin. Hi, everybody. My name is Mark Minkin, and uh, I live in the state of Wisconsin, and my wife has ataxia. Uh, my wife, Leah, was diagnosed with ataxia probably about three, four years ago. And, you know, ever since then, my thought was, how do I educate? How do I do more for the National Ataxia Foundation? And about two, two years ago, I was fortunate enough to meet Joel Sutherland uh, out in Madison during one of our, uh, our, our big walks. And um, Joel approached me and asked, you know, hey, we're, we're thinking about doing this, uh, this big walk. And, uh, and it's, it's called the Baton Death March. And it's to raise awareness and raise funds for ataxia. And without even thinking about it, I told him, I'm in, I'm in. Um, you know, as part of that walk and, and, and one of the things that we were asked to do was, was to raise funds and, and asked to, you know, I'm not going to say commit, but try and raise, uh, you know, close to $10,000 um, for this event. And, you know, I was all in and, you know, started thinking about different ways that I could raise funds while also raising awareness about ataxia. And I spent some time, uh, we'll say, I, I spent some time brainstorming with Joel, some different ideas of what I could do to, to raise these funds back in 2019 for the, uh, uh, for, for the Baton Death March to raise awareness. And I did things like I uh, had brought fry at uh, at my work, I, I work for a company that matches up to two thousand dollars. So, I uh, had a very successful brat fry at work. I I created a um, a, a best burger uh, and uh, contest with uh, with four restaurants, and people could purchase cards to to. Um, uh, try out these these burgers and then vote. And at the end, we we named the the best burger. Um, as we got closer, and and, and again, I raised close to seven thousand dollars in two thousand nineteen for the Baton Death March. And unfortunately, uh, COVID hit, and there was a decision to uh, cancel the walk. But on a positive note, you know what came out of the um, we did the walk virtually, so I still walked 26.2 miles, um, but it was virtually. Um, but, uh, you know, what came out of this was, you know, not only the, the money that I raised to, to help uh, the National Taxi Foundation, but it was also the education, because so many people don't know um, about a taxi and what it is. So one thing I want to talk about when it comes to fundraising, you know, you're not you're not doing this on your own. The National Taxi Foundation has been so very helpful. Uh, like I mentioned, I spent uh, numerous times having conversations with with Joel uh, Sutherland, just brainstorming different ideas and. Uh, that was a great experience. And that's how I came up with, honestly, the, the Richfield's Best Burger um, fundraiser was through a conversation with, um, uh, with Joel. The other piece, John Wegman has been absolutely integral and, and, and an important part of my fundraising efforts as well. Um, he has, uh, he helped create um, you know, information and flyers that I could, I could post up. He, uh, he created actually my, my uh, uh, best burger cards. He put together um, uh, media information for me to send out to the media to try. And so the biggest piece I want to stress is you're not, you're not, you know, 
on your own. You've got so much support from the National Taxi Foundation. Um, the other piece too is, you know, advice or tips. I guess the, the, my, my advice is that if you're on the fence, um, think about the why. Why are you on the fence? I mean, you are, you're obviously involved because you have a significant other or you have a family member that is, is impacted by this, this terrible disease. And, you know, it's, it's about wanting to do more so that, that you can help educate because honestly, the power is in the numbers. The more people we have out there educating and raising funds, someday there's going to be a cure. And maybe there won't be a cure in, in our lifetime, but down the road, if, if, if we can continue to educate, continue to raise funds, I am confident that there will be a cure for ataxia. So don't hesitate. Reach out to, to, to NAF, ask them for advice, ask them for some suggestions, and they will help you get the ball rolling. Hey, thanks so much, Mark. Uh, not just for the, uh, the video, uh, but for all you and Leah do uh, in support of the National Taxi Foundation. Um, you, you're really pretty humble, too, in what you've done and have been able to do. Um, Mark's spot on, though. Uh, you know, his involvement started at, at an event in Wisconsin. I, I asked him if he'd like to get in, involved with us, and he was just, it was, it was a very fast yes. Yes, um, he was so enthusiastic, oh. Joel. I remember this. And, you know, that's something I love about Mark is his energy. He's just like one of those people that, yep, whatever you need me to do, just <laughs> sign me up. He's just so like that, which is great. Exactly. I mean, um, Mark would tell you that this has become his mission, and I totally understand it. And we have a lot of fun. We've had some great conversations over these last couple of years. And, and when I say he's being a little humble, I mean, he's only touching on a couple of things that he's uh, – uh, he has tied in with us. Um, some of you may know or may not know, but uh, Mark also dressed up and uh, served as Santa Claus last year uh, to a number of kids in his uh, hometown and home, his area there in uh, just outside of Milwaukee. And um, donations were made. And he, I, I saw the videos. Mark was a fabulous Santa. And, he was. Uh, Oh, but you know what, Joel, it, you know, talk about breaking the paradigm of what a right. fundraiser is, right? It's like something that was like near and dear to his heart. He wanted to bring joy to the little kids. So he dressed up as Santa and saw it as an op opportunity to collect funds. Like that's, that's like a creative way to do this and something that you like to do. Big time. And, you know, and, and he and, and Leah and, and some of, some of their friends, uh, uh, drove down to uh, Nashville this past year and took part in the Country Skies Extreme Hike. Uh, we had a blast on there. Uh, Mother Nature took was not kind to us, but we had a great time. Uh, once again, making some memories. Uh, we made some, and through that event down there, we got some great publicity. So we had some great awareness that was created. Um, but once again, you know, Mark Mark said yes to starting, and um, we've we've had a lot a lot of fun ever since. I got to tell you, kind of like uh, just between us. You know, Mark's a big Packer fan and I'm a big Vikings fan, but I'll tell you, when it comes down to raising funds and building awareness, I mean, there's no separation at all. I mean, we're hip to hip. And uh, you guys are uh, on the he's, same. He's my team. favorite Packer fan, and I'd like to think I'm his favorite Vikings fan. How's that? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it's, it, he's done a, he's done a great job. And I, and I know we've got a lot more uh, things to do and have a lot more fun to have uh, moving forward with, uh, with Mark. You know, I also want to just take a quick moment and uh, acknowledge another sponsor of ours uh, who are, who's helping um, uh, this production take place and uh, has helped us in some other areas this year. And that's a company, Insperity. Insperity is a human resource company uh, for the National Ataxia Foundation and um, have become a really good partner with us. And they, they too have made financial contributions to, to make sure that this event uh, uh, comes off. And uh, some of you who have taken part in the, uh, the virtual, or I should say the live events this year have uh, certainly familiar with their, their logo that was uh, placed on our shirts. And so we want to thank our friends at Insperity uh, for taking part in this year's uh, Walk and Roll campaign. Dana? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, Joel, um, while we were, while the video was rolling, while Mark's video was rolling, I yeah. took a look at the chat and there's some great ideas coming through. 
And so I just want to remind everybody, if you haven't had a chance yet to put your ideas in the chat, please, you know, continue to input those ideas. You know, there's no um, timeline on that. Like you can do that through the, re through the rest of the 90 minute broadcast. Awesome, awesome. So next right. up, we, I, I think we want to hear from Andrew again. I think Andrew's got do. something we for us, do doesn't he? Hear. We do want to hear from Andrew. And Andrew is um, in, in his next video, he is in Washington and he's going to tell us about, you know, advocacy. And we know that that's a subject near and dear to my heart and, um, you know, getting the word out about ataxia, but this time it's involving, you know, people in Washington, senators in Washington, and that's really exciting. So take it away, Andrew. Let's, I'm excited to hear what you have to say on this topic. Hi, Andrew Rosen, Executive Director at NAF, here in front of our nation's capital uh, to talk about another element of NAF's philanthropy program, and that is our advocacy work that we've done. Uh, I was here in Washington, D.C. today to help prep for our annual Day on the Hill, which is tomorrow. We have over 100 meetings with people from the U.S. Congress to advocate for the various issues that are important to our community, and your help uh, has really uh, allowed us to really kind of uh, accelerate our advocacy program. Uh, this is almost 10 times the number of meetings we've ever had before. Uh, we were able to hire a professional scheduling firm uh, that really made this possible this year. And uh, we are really excited about the meetings tomorrow and some of the, uh, the asks that we're making of our Congress people to help uh, in the fight for treatments and an eventual cure for ataxia. So thank you for your support and uh, we'll talk soon. Hey, th thanks again, Andrew. You know, um, you know, Andrew could be like a news correspondent. You know, I mean, uh, you know, he's, I think he's, let's face it, part-time I mean, job. I yeah, really okay, you know, on the side, yeah, he's, he's he does a nice job. He does a nice job of that. And you know, uh, you alluded to it uh, prior to the the message there, Dana. That you know, getting uh, Congress to uh, to learn about ataxia and what our community uh, lives with on a day-to-day -day basis is so important and. Um, the team here at NEF has really uh, done a nice job uh, of ramping up the, the efforts in the area of uh, advocacy and connecting with our, our lawmakers and, uh, well, uh, a tip of the cap to all those involved. Um, you know what, hey, Joel, if, I, if yeah. I could just add to that for one second, I, yeah. I also think it's fabulous that we've joined forces with FARA to do that, Absolutely. right? And so it's like more of a united front going to Washington to fight for, you know, advocacy for a tax year. I just think it was a great effort by everybody yeah. that was involved. And we had a lot of people in our ataxia community that signed up to be part of those meetings. So, you know, congratulations to everyone. It was very effective. Hey, there's strength in numbers, right? And uh, getting everybody together to lock arms and uh, Take on Capitol Hill is, is a big uh, a big exercise, and it's it's um, it's been fun to to see take off and doing a great job. So, um, and hey, uh, talking about fun, um, how about how about our passion fundraising, uh, Dana? I mean, we I know we've got some ideas uh, that have been coming through. Uh, anything uh, ring a bell for you, or anything's um, really call it, you can uh, shout out for us right now. You know, I think that um, we've got some suggestions about, you know, just like baking cookies and selling the cookies, right? Like, you know, we have um, that. We also have, you know, just running different little events in town. Maybe like, you know, Mark said with his burger, you know, his burger challenge, right? right. And we, there's been others that have come in with about pizza, you know, pizza bake-offs and chili bake-offs, stuff like that. So, I mean, I think it's really good. Although I am seeing a common theme in, in that they're all food related, but you know, <laughs> hey, we all got to eat. <laughs> that's right. No, that's right. And always fun. I'll tell you what, that attracts a good crowd too, doesn't it? It really it does. does. So. Well, hey, let's, um, Let's take a look back on, on this past year um, on some of the passion fundraising events that have been taking place and maybe something here will spark uh, spark an interest for you as well. And uh, uh, by all means, uh, send in some ideas and we're going to we're going to share a few here in just a couple minutes. All right. So let's take a look at some of this year's fundraising uh, passion fundraising events.
Well, did, uh, did you see some folks there you know? Uh, did you get some ideas that maybe uh, uh, something you might like to do for this year? You know, it's uh, there's some great, great events in there. You know, the, uh, the run for Jeremy. Um, you might be interested to know that that was scheduled to be a 10K as part of a, a big run in Northern California. And shortly before the, uh, that was supposed to take place, the event got canceled. And yet Angela Perkins, who you saw in the video, decided, you know what, I'm, I'm doing it anyway. So she got her husband and they, uh, they did their own run. Um, and uh, that'll be interesting to see where that goes for next year, because I know Angela is, is really bullish on doing it again next year. Cameron's call was there. Jane Jaffe down in, in uh, San Diego has done a wonderful tea time for a cure. Uh, tea time, not golf traditional tea as you saw what a great idea um and she's just done, wanted, done a wonderful job we have the, some golf events you know certainly the one in Wittensville this past year uh up in destroyer golf park in buffalo new york a very unique golf tournament the chili cook-off i mean gosh there's so many different things people can do dana well, how about the space fest like oh. that? One, so I'm such a space junkie. And can I just say I'm so excited that Captain Kirk got <laughs> to go to space like yeah. uh, very excited. Right. But the yeah. space fest, what a great opportunity and so such a creative idea. Right. Not something that you would usually think about as a fundraiser. Big time. And, and for those who might want to know more, you know, just go to I think it's uh, check out Space Fest online. It's down in Tucson every July. And um, uh, John Wakeman uh, and I have been had a chance to attend it a couple of times. A very cool event and uh, something that, you know what, it's been a part of their life for a long time and they've turned it into a wonderful fundraiser for yeah. now. Yep, it's great. It's like, it just goes to show that it can be something that's a passion of yours, which is hence the name, Passion Fundraiser, right. that you turn into something that benefits the whole Ataxia community because you're raising the awareness and you're raising the funds. And you know, know I think the other important thing, Joel, um, to stress is, you know, coming out of the box, like first year, it's, right. you know, set, set your sights, you know, on a, on a attainable goal. It doesn't right. have to be, you know, $300,000 that you're going to raise, right? It could just be right. a couple hundred dollars, whatever it is, it is going to helping fund ataxia research and other philanthropy projects so i mean it's well worth any amount that can be donated yeah and it's and it's and it'll be fun you know I, during that last uh message i got a nice uh, uh email sent to me talking about some ideas that uh, one of our viewers has that uh, she happens to live in an area where there's a lot of wineries um and doing a wine tasting and a wine pull um she has an idea of, of Blacklight bingo. I'm telling you what, that sounds like kind of fun to me. I, I got to learn a little bit more about that, you know, <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm sure that, that one could be kind of fun. Um, you know, some of those things just to get going, you know, it's, uh, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. And, you know, it's football season. So anybody who wants to do tailgating parties or something like that might be creative and fun to do. Oh, I mean, we've, uh, I've seen people doing poker walks um, or, or por poker rides, you know, where, you get a bunch of people together and the, you start in a location and everybody gets a card, usually in, a, in an envelope where you can't see what's in there. Okay. Then you go to each site and then you finish up wherever you started and people will leave there are five cards, five envelopes or seven, and they open up and the best poker hand wins. Now oh, there's a little entry fee on the front end. You get together, maybe have some lunch or dinner and maybe a cold beverage along the line. You give some prizes away. You have a great time. Um, and who knows how that can grow? Uh, some really good stuff. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And you know, um, I was thinking about Laura and when she said, you know, they sold tickets to Cameron's right. event, right? And she wasn't sure like, you know, what people would pay. But it just made me think, you know, you could charge something, a nominal fee to get into some kind of an event, right? Like maybe you have a picnic in the park and you charge a small amount to get in. And those are funds that are raised that can be turned in for a taxi or so, you know, any idea is a great idea. There's no stupid ideas. Exactly. And you know what? A lot of folks that have, have really turned and done a nice job with Facebook fundraising, haven't they, Dan, with their Facebook yes. uh, and, and, and birthday fundraisers, right? Okay. Yep, birthday fundraising. That's something that doesn't, you know, require any, you know, it's it's very little effort. All you have to do is turn it on. And people have raised some pretty good money through that. 
Absolutely. It's been some really good stuff. And well, hey, uh, those are some ideas. Be sure to send them in. You know, uh, don't be shy. Use that chat feature and uh, send in your thoughts or uh, by all means, um, you can send them to me via email at joel at, at attachy.org and, and we'll share those with, uh, with folks as they come in. And uh, you know, Dan, I think it's time for uh, another Visa gift card giveaway. It Am is. I wrong? I think, nope, I think it we're is. there. It's, yeah, it's another one. So this is our fourth Visa gift card. And the winner of this Visa gift card is Seth Johnson. Congratulations on winning a $100 Visa gift card. How about that, Seth? You just had to sit there. You won a hundred bucks. Not a bad, not a bad gig, huh? <laughs> Great. Yeah. And I think we're ready for our next code as well. So this is code number four. Now, I don't want you to be confused with this, okay? This is code number four. Some of you may have already had, had given this some thought and may be able to anticipate it, okay? Now, this is not to throw you off. The fourth code is research. <laughs> all right, so code number four is research. Please write down all the codes in order. And at the completion of today's program, uh, we will uh, we'll get, uh, submit them to me at joel at attachy.org. And then um, uh, at about three o'clock today, I'm gonna take all of the uh, entries, the correct entries. We will have a drawing for that. And uh, uh, the winner will receive a $300 gift card. Um, also, a quick update on the tie. The bid for a tie is now at two hundred and twenty-five dollars. So, um, hey, that's that's not bad. I mean, that's we're going in the right direction. So, um, our first bidder, who will remain anonymous, anonymous, <laughs> um, if you'd like to up the bid, you're, it's at currently at two hundred and twenty-five dollars, and um, I look forward to the next bid. So. Um, Joel, well, I just want to say, I think that's very creative of you and the staff at NAF that at three o'clock Central Standard Time, mm -hmm. you are pulling a $300 gift card winner. So exactly. I just wanted to say <laughs> double threes. <laughs> oh, I, I got you. Yeah, no, good, got yeah, good point. <laughs> good, good point. No, that, that's, that's solid. That's solid. And by the way, if you'd like to uh, make a donation, uh, you can uh, simply click on the, uh, the donate uh, link that is provided on screen, and um, uh, we would love to um, accept your donation. So uh, keep those passion fundraising ideas uh, coming. Um, yeah. Remember, it's, it's more than just raising the funds. And by all means, it's a lot of fun to do that, but you're creating awareness, you're energizing your community, um, and you're making some great memories. Yeah. And, you know, it's... Well, I mean, we're all in this to together and um, um, by all means, let us know how we can help. Um, don't, uh, don't not start um, without giving us, a call, giving us a call to see how we can help you jumpstart your efforts for, uh, you know, let's plan for 2022, all right? So let, let's see what we can do. Let's have some fun doing it. There's a lot more people out across the country that John Wegman and I want to meet um, and, and get involved with. So. Uh, Please keep those ideas coming. Give us a shout. Send us an email, joel at attaxi.org or john at attaxi.org. But it's J-O-N. It's not J-O-H-N at attaxi.org. John, J-O-N at attaxi.org. And we'd be more than happy. We're excited to uh, share your thoughts and maybe build on some of your ideas, okay? And if you so, do decide to do something, I think that one of the things from having done stuff in the past, make sure you take pictures. You know, everybody has a smartphone with a camera these days. And so right. even if you're not taking it with an old fashioned camera, you can get some snaps on your iPhone. And it really is a great keepsake to look back on. So, you know, make sure if you do decide to do something, you're capturing the moment with pictures. Great stuff for sure. Well, Daniel, we're moving into our third half hour. Uh, this is going pretty quick. I know it. So, uh, uh, you know, with that, um, one of the things that I think uh, um, we, we continue to, to do a better job of, and we still need to do more of it, is truly recognize uh, the efforts of so many people uh, within our community to, to do so much uh, year in and year out um, for us and with us. And... Um, with that, we've, we want to recognize somebody uh, very special today. Um, we, want to, we want to thank Mike DeRosa for the many things that he's done um, for our community. Uh, 
to help get, get things started, to raise funds, um, tremendous amount of funding he's created um, with others. And the awareness that he's brought to, to the military community on what a taxi is all about. And subsequently energizing so many people. And, and let me tell you, <laughs> created a lot of memories uh, through his efforts. And Danny, you know that as, uh, as, much, as well as I do. No, I do. I, you know, I'm very excited about this award because Mike is a personal friend of mine. And, and I do know how much of his heart and soul he puts into it. And, you know, he has a taxia himself. And, you know, some things that he does is a little bit of a struggle for him, but he hangs in there. He's a tough man and I'm just really proud of him. And I'm happy that he's a recipient this year. Well, to uh, award, uh, to, to provide this acknowledgement of this award to Mike, uh, I'd like to welcome uh, a member of the National Taxi Foundation's Board of Directors, uh, Mr. David Brunert. So well, let's hear from David and then we'll hear from Mike. Hi, I'm Dave Brunert, and I'm a board member of the National Ataxia Foundation, and I'm thrilled to be here today to celebrate our friend Mike DeRosa. Mike has been an absolute force of nature with respect to helping uh, change the outcomes for people with ataxia and families uh, that struggle with ataxia. You know, when someone has a passion like Mike does, it's not always clear how to get involved. There's no rule book for doing anything with respect to fundraising, with respect to collaborating and communicating. But one thing Mike's done uh, that we should all endeavor to do is he's been biased toward action. Mike, in the absence of any guidance, he attacked and he, he moved and, and took on initiatives and he tried things. And uh, that's what we're, we're, what we're really celebrating today. So Mike's been uh, heavily involved in uh, uh, communicating with the, the, the National Ataxia Board, with the staff, with fellow Ataxians and family members that are affected. He's also uh, been a key leader in the Joint Mission Baton effort. And I uh, can't say enough about Mike's effort uh, around the local community there in North Carolina. So um, please join me in celebrating uh, Mike DeRosa on this special day. Uh, congratulations, Mike, and this honor is well-deserved. Thanks. Thank you to my fellow veteran, David Brunner, for the presentation. Uh, and thank you to National Tax Foundation for this amazing award. And it's greatly appreciated. It truly is. Uh, thank you. I accept this award uh, on behalf of the Ataxia Nation, uh, an army of amazing people who push forward every day, overcoming any obstacle that is presented. It all started from a solo walk to raise awareness and donations for a worthy and amazing cause, a tax year. By participating in multiple walk and rolls to the country skies, extreme height. However, it was a joint mission baton, the Jam B, which brought tens of people together to help raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for continued support of the NAF mission. This truly is what it is all about. Training for the 2022 Jam B starts in November. <laughs> Can't wait. So we look forward to you being a part of an amazing team for an incredible mission and experience. Thank you once again to the National Taxi Foundation. And I look forward to seeing you virtually and especially at the 2022 AAC in Orlando. Hey, thanks again, Mike, for all you've done and for all you continue to do. You know, one of the one of the uh, things that people need to know about uh, about Mike and his efforts and everything he's done here. Granted, uh, um, we've raised several hundred thousand dollars through these efforts through the uh, Joint Mission Baton um, campaign, but you know, it didn't start that way. Um, it started um, with uh, one guy, Mike walking the event one time and he raised six thousand um, dollars i remember i was in philadelphia i i met my my very first uh, conference was in orlando probably five six years ago i met him we had a great conversation and then it was uh, two years after that in philadelphia i got a call from one of our board members saying hey uh, mike de rosa would like to meet with you and i you know frankly i got it been two years ago and i like holy cow like, okay mike yeah yeah so Mike and I teamed up in the lobby and he gave me a check for $6,000 and shared with me how it was raised. 
and um, it was amazing. Um, and from there, we introduced uh, Mike was introduced and teamed up with Ed Brand, and and the following year, the two of them uh, took part in the same same march and raised over thirty five thousand dollars. And then the following year, we had thirty people from around the country raising funds and and scheduled to go down to uh, Las Cruces for the joint mission Baton, only to have that uh, event squelched due to COVID. Um, and you know what, um, despite that, the energy and the, um, the willingness to stay with it has, has developed other events. And I know Mike is gonna be at the AAC this year and we'll be talking about plans for JMB um, next year as well, 2023. And, and I know Mike's gonna be doing something a lot, you know, for this year's uh, JMB, raising some funds and doing some hiking as well. But uh, uh, just an extraordinary um, effort that Mike's put forth. And, like I said, Mike, we, we thank you for all you've done, for all you continue to do, and it's really very inspirational for everybody involved. And, and once again, this all happened because Mike started. He had, this was a passion of his, it was something that he wanted to do, and it's really, uh, it's really growing into something else. So Mike, thanks. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Great job. Um, and you know, to your point, Joel, you gotta start somewhere. And so it's really yeah. just yeah. starting, like you yeah. say. Yeah. So, all right. All right. So we so, want to go into, uh, I think Andrew's got something for us, Dana. Yes, we're going to go to our roving reporter, Mr. Andrew <laughs> Rosen. Um, and actually, this is a favorite video of mine because you can really see how, you know, his hidden skills and talents that we didn't know that he had. So <laughs> he is, we're going to go to listen to Andrew. He is uh, with Matt Bauer. And um, but they're going to talk about genetic testing. So take it away, Andrew. Hi, everyone. Andrew Rosen, executive director from NAF again. You've already heard me talk about the importance of your philanthropic support for programs like our AEC Travel Grant Program and the great work we do with our advocacy team uh, on Capitol Hill. So I wanted to talk about one other thing today, and that's all the resources that we support for our community. You've heard about a lot recently about uh, genetic testing and the importance that that has, especially as we get closer to clinical trials for treatments for ataxia. Well, I'm here today with Matt Bauer. Uh, Matt's a genetic counselor at University of Minnesota Health. Um, Matt, maybe you can just talk a little bit about the, why genetic testing is important for the ataxia community. Yeah, no, I'm happy to. And thank you everyone for participating. This is such an important thing. Um, I've been involved over the last 20 years with genetic testing with ataxia, both in our clinic here at the University of Minnesota and in the laboratory. And it's been such an exciting time to watch the technology and our knowledge grow. When I first started 20 years ago, most of the patients who walked in the door when they asked that question of what type of ataxia do I have or is this going to impact my kids? We couldn't answer their questions a lot of the time. Right. And it has really, really changed. It's um, with things like sequencing and now whole exome and whole genome sequencing, we're able to provide those answers to so many more patients. And you sort of hinted at it up until now, that information I think has been important for patients to put a name to what they've got. Um, it's been important for talking with their family members about what's in the family. But I think we're at a key juncture here right. where there's gonna be a shift where finding those answers is going to have an impact on treatment decisions. And so that really, I think, is going to be an important shift coming up is identifying the genetic cause as we start to see some of these clinical trials roll forward. Awesome. Matt, thanks for that. Um, to wrap things up here, listen, thank you to our community for all of the support you've given NAF year after year, and uh, we'll go back live. Thanks. Hey, thanks so much, Andrew. Uh, once again, thanks for uh, the, the video productions today. Great stories, uh, really sh showing uh, our community, uh, our viewers today, um, just some of the areas where their funds uh, go in support of the mission of uh, the National Tax Foundation. Thank you. And thanks to Matt Bauer as well for taking part in uh, today's program. Um, also want to now move to uh, code number five. And uh, well, code number five is Fines, F-I-N-D-S, fines. So um, remember, write down all six codes. We have one more now coming up after this one. Write them all down and send them to me at joel at ataxia.org. 
and there will be a, uh, a drawing at three o'clock today. And the winner is going to win a $300 gift card. So uh, hopefully you've been able to keep track of the codes and uh, I look forward to seeing your entries after today's program. So Dana, take it away. Oh, thanks, Joel. I, I want to, you know, take a minute to thank our sponsors again. So in Sperity, I'd like to say thank you to and also to Biohaven. And right now, Biohaven, we're going to go to Biohaven. We, they did a short little video montage for us. And in it, you're going to get to see the faces of the folks that work for Biohaven and are such great pa partners of ours at the National Ataxia Foundation. So I hope you enjoy this little video that they put together and you recognize some familiar faces in it. So Biohaven, here we go. Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. Time grabs you by the rest, directs you where to go. So make the best of this test and don't ask why. It's not a question but a lesson learned in time. It's something unpredictable. But in the end, right. Knowing the diagnosis is empowering. It's the need to know imperative. I coined that phrase because I learned it from patients that not knowing what you have is very frustrating. And having a doctor say, well, you have it, nothing I can do, is both frustrating and also very inaccurate. It is very empowering, and these patients need to know that they're part of a broad community, and it's a very, very supportive community. We just need to educate everybody and get awareness out so that these patients are referred to the people they need to be referred to so that they can get the help that they need. gentleman you know he said what he did he you know dr schmaman asked him what he does and he says i volunteer in a you know in a homeless shelter and another lady was helping to train some of the assist dogs the great danes to help people to stand yeah. and so it was really inspiring for me to see people you know that are having a tough time but still are willing to give back Hope you enjoyed that video. You've, uh, I hope there's some faces that might be familiar to you, some of our folks at, at Biohaven. Um, can't thank them enough for all they do. Um, and um, hopefully they'll be with us again next year for this event and others. So thank you to all of our friends um, at Biohaven Pharmaceutical. I also want to take just a minute or so to, to thank uh, folks who've really been a part of pulling this, this event together today. Certainly everybody who's participating in uh, pre-recording their messages for today. Um, you know who you are, and you've certainly seen a lot of those folks today, but we, we certainly appreciate them uh, not just taking their time to take part in this video, but for all they've done and continue to do to, to help pushing our, our, our forward, our mission forward. We really do appreciate that. You know, I also want to talk, uh, I want to thank my colleague John Wegman here, Hawkeye, uh, for all he's done to help pull this thing together. Um, our executive director, Andrew Rosen, for all of his support in pulling this uh this event together and, and his correspondence uh professionalism he's done a great job and for all my colleagues here at uh at nef who who play a part in this every day uh, and keep pushing forward on our mission uh, of uh, finding a treatment and then a cure for our community while um, hoping that we're able to uh, improve the lives of you, uh, your lives who live with it, the taxi every day we we hope we're playing a role in that and and, and answering questions from time to time but uh, I want to thank all of them for, for what they do uh, as uh, in pursuit of our mission. Um, some of you, uh, I'm sure not all of you, are familiar with uh, 
our Facebook uh, uh, pages. And we have a gentleman who's, uh, who's risi really risen um, in our Facebook communications, chat rooms and such. And uh, his name is Frank Orlowski. And Frank has, has really risen um, due to his tremendous positive messages. And you know we hear from that every so often, just random. I mean, we'll be talking with people and they'll say, "Do you see what Frank had to say?" Um, you know, and I haven't, but now you got to go check. And um, you know, last year, if you remember, we, we really wanted to end our message um, or our, our, our virtual event with a strong message from Jeremy Coward. How what you know what we really need you. And well, it became really clear this past spring when I was uh, I was speaking with a new member of our taxi family. And, and this gentleman said, you know, I just love Frank Orlowski. Everything he has to say, it's like Frank is the man. And you know what, it, um, it became real evident there that uh, uh, Frank needed to be the one to help us put a bow on this year's walk -in, a virtual walk and roll. But for a number of reasons, you know, Frank would prefer to have somebody read his words for him. So I reached out to that gentleman who said, Frank, is the man. So um, this gentleman is Mr. Paul Carlisle. Now I, I should say we're, we're friends now because Paul told me I could call him Chip. So uh, um, last week we sat down with, with, uh, with Chip and shared Frank's words with him. And today Chip is going to read Frank's words for you. So let's hear from, uh, let's hear the words of Frank Orlowski through Chip Carlisle. In his own words, I'll be reading about Frank Orlowski's life, both the past and the present. A life of loving physical work, the outdoors and its challenges. A life of many pursuits. My life, my once upon a time life. Now it's a life reimagined and unimagined not so long ago. Now it's a life where a set of stairs is more of an obstacle than the Rocky Mountain tops ever were. Where simply standing up and turning around is often a greater challenge than skiing the slopes. Life changes for all of us. Sometimes those changes are abrupt. Sometimes they're so subtle we don't notice them until they are upon us. Either way, we are often caught unaware. It is our response, how we adapt to those changes that determines the course of our new lives. I once was so naive as to believe my life could go on in a very predictable way. No real highs or lows, continuing on just as it always had. Was I ever mistaken? I'd failed to look around me to realize that no life is given that option. The course of constancy, Sure, some face greater hardships and so, some achieve some rewards more than others, but it is a given that all of us encounter life altering changes for better or worse throughout our lives. It is easy and natural to look back and say, I wish to return to the way it used to be. It is far harder to look down the yet uncharted road with that new heavy burden and say, I will make my way and I will somehow thrive. But we have little choice. Returning is not an option. If we only open our eyes and our minds to our new reality, however, we may realize that this new life offers its own possibilities. The lessons learned through change, even catastrophic change can enhance life. And if we apply them, the lives of others. For myself, the lessons of compassion, humility, fortitude, willingness, patience, grace, and the ability to touch others' lives through words and actions come to my mind. Lessons my old life lacked to some extent. I'm sure you imagine your life of change, you'll find lessons that you've learned too. Perspective is a funny thing. Looking backwards often is comforting, while the here and now can be unsettling. The future even daunting. 
Yet the lessons we're taught by life's trauma and change better prepare us for where we are and where we'll go if we only will grasp them. May those lessons give you peace and comfort in each and every day. So my friends, what about today? So we woke up to another day. It may turn out to be a good day or not so good. It may turn out to be extra special. It may turn out to be routine. What you choose to do with today often determines the outcome. So challenge yourself. Take on that task you've avoided. Walk that extra stretch if you can. Do the extra rep or two at the gym or at home. Play hard if you play. Get outside and breathe the fresh air. Take in the socks and the sights that are often overlooked. Socialize. Write a word or two or 200 to someone else or even to yourself. Make that phone call and listen to someone who needs a willing ear. Smile at a stranger or hug a friend or do the opposite if you're daring. Play your favorite music and sing along too, no matter what your voice sounds like. Squeeze that animal friend hard. They leave us all too soon. Rest your mind and your soul. Meditate on beauty, on life, or nothing at all. Read or listen to words read by others and learn something new. Remember that those, remember those that you love who've passed. Mourn a bit, but rejoice that their words, faces, and spirits will always be part of you. Ask for help without feeling guilty. Offer help while asking for nothing in return. But most importantly, love one another. When the day is over, no matter what occurred, say, I tried and I did my very best. If you're so inclined, thank the creator or God or nature or the universe for this day, which will never ever come again. Then lie down peacefully hoping or praying the opportunity of another day will soon be yours. That's Frank Orlowski. I got to tell you folks, I believe firmly that when life closes one door, another door is open. But most of, uh, most of us remain so focused on the door that's been closed that we often fail to see the new open doors they're right in front of our faces. So today, look for the open doors. They are there and they are there for you to grasp them. Have a blessed day and thank you all very much. Hey, uh, thanks so much, Chip, uh, for sharing Frank's words with us. Frank, thank you so much uh, for all you do on our Facebook uh, pages. And, and I hope you, uh, if you didn't know before, I hope you now know um, how inspirational your positive messages are for this community. So um, with that, Dana. Thanks, Joel. So, you know, and it's the time of this broadcast that I hate the most because we have to wrap up things. But yeah. before we do, we got a couple of pieces of business to attend to. So we go. have our final Visa gift card that we're going to give away. And the winner of that is Stephanie Kearns. And that hey. is a $200 Visa gift card. So congratulations, Stephanie. Congratulations, yeah. Yeah, and that uh, uh, that brings us to our final code for today. And uh, the final code, if maybe some of you have already figured it out, our final code is answers. A-N-S-W-E-R-S, -S, answers. So you have all six codes. Uh, if you have them, please send them to me at joel at ataxi.org. And uh, there will be a drawing today of all those submissions at three o'clock Central Standard Time. And the winner will be notified either by email or by phone. So uh, there you have it, Dana. There you have it. So, you know, I, I think it's time to just 
kind of recap the day, what we went through today. So, you know, we started out talking about the walk and rolls. And again, we just want to thank everyone who had an in-person live walk and roll this year. You know, your efforts were greatly appreciated and the funds raised were, you know, very, it, just great. It was just yeah. great, you know, and for those of you who had decided to opt out, we totally understand. We respect your decision. And again, we're just hoping that next year brings us all back together again in person. That's what, yeah. that would be really great. We also spent some time talking about passion fundraising. And um, I think if there's some message I'd like to leave with you is, uh, would be to think with your heart and start and reach out and let us help. Um, you never know this, where this will take it, uh, but I guarantee you we'll raise a couple of dollars. We'll, uh, we'll have some fun doing it. We'll raise awareness. We'll energize our community and we're going to make some great memories. Yeah, absolutely. And then, you know, we also acknowledged a great force within the Ataxia community, and that is the force within Mike DeRosa. Um, you know, congratulations, Mike, on your award. It was really well deserved. And we had another force, and that force shows up on Facebook practically every day to give words of encouragement and really some introspective opinions and beliefs, and that's Frank Orlowski. And, you know, I want to leave everybody with one thing. So Frank's had many profound things to say and many yeah. inspirational things to say. But one thing that really stuck out to me was when he said this. When the day is over, say, I tried and I did my very best. I really think those words are powerful for anyone. One and more to Frank, ask. thank you for your, you know, inspirational words. Yeah. And I hope you all enjoyed hearing a little bit more where the, where the dollars go from our travel grants to our advocacy programs and certainly to our research efforts. And specifically today, you know, how we talked about how Andrew and, and Matt Bauer from the University of Minnesota talked a little bit about genetic testing. There's a lot going, a lot of work going on here at, uh, at NEF, uh, all in pursuit of, of the mission set forth, uh, and that is to find a treatment and a cure uh, and to hopefully improve the lives of those living with a taxi on a day to day basis. Um, with that, uh, we want to bring it to a close and just uh, a, rem a reminder uh, the bid for the gold tie is at $225. Uh, look for a, a call or an email from me if you happen to win the $300 gift card for our code giveaway. And last but not least, um, if you enjoyed today's program, please send uh, uh, a message to Andrew <laughs> at andrew at ataxi.org. But if you had any problems or issues, or if you didn't like it, send them to me <laughs> at joel at ataxi.org. So with that, Dana, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks uh, to John Wegman and Andrew for uh, helping us uh, behind the scenes here today, kind of our executive producer and uh, directors and such behind the scenes. And uh, just want to thank everybody and wishing all of you today uh, a, a really good Saturday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and uh, uh, stay safe and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye everyone.